everybody. Glad to have you with me this morning. So glad you're here. I think we got a really an important lesson today, and I don't think I'm exaggerating when I say that if you pay really close attention today and integrate into your life what I'm going to teach, it can absolutely change your life. This is one of those teachings that um, I just know can make a change, huge change. I don't care where you're at in your journey, if you're just beginning to understand what this grace message is all about, or you've been traveling this route for a while, I want to bring some things to your attention today <clears throat> that I think will greatly benefit you and aid you. Uh, and I'm going to bring it into some very practical realms. So stick with me today all through the entire lesson. If you have to leave, come back, pick it up. It's probably one of those that you're going to have to listen to two or three times to get the full impact of it. Here's what I've discovered that if you're going to live the Christ life, the Christ is us life, I like to call it, it's actually about one thing, one thing. Everything develops around this one thing. It, it was, I think, maybe the, the, the primo secret of success for the life of Jesus when he walked on the planet. And that is this, here's, here's the one thing. This is what kept Jesus moving in the right direction, and here's what's gonna pull the scales off of your eyes knowing and being continually conscious of what Jesus said in that day, you're going to know that I am in the Father and you're in me and I'm in you and you're in the Father and the Father is in you. Think about that for just a minute. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit and you are entangled together as one with distinction. You'll never be the Father. You'll never be the Son. You'll never be the Holy Spirit. But they have invited you into that circle of relationship and fellowship to live the life that they totally designed for you from the foundation of the world. When Paul discovered this, this Christ in him that had always been in him that he was totally ignorant of, it's in Galatians 1, 15, 16, not revealed to him, but in him, Paul never looked back. And in fact, it became the very foundation of every revelation that Paul brought to the table for Gentiles. It was, it was through this, this understanding of union, of oneness, that Paul brought such deep revelation that it turned the world upside down. That revelation, that, that level of consciousness dominated in his life and put into Paul's life the flow of everything that he needed. So... He passed some of this wisdom to young Timothy. So just before I, I read from 2 Timothy uh, chapter 1, verse 11 and 12, I just want to emphasize this again. It's imperative that you understand that you're in the Father, the Father's in you, you're in Jesus, Jesus is in you. You are one together. You are in total, full union as one. Now, here's some wisdom Stay with me today. Here's some wisdom that Paul passed to Timothy. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 11. I'm going to read verses 11, 12, and 13. And I'm going to read it out of the New King James. And then I wrote down what Francois de Toy put in the Mere Bible. Probably the best literal uh, paraphrase that you can find any place on the planet. I say literal paraphrase. I think you understand what I'm saying. Francois does such a deep dive into the, into the Greek. He pulls out such great meaning that I, he calls it a paraphrase. And it, and it is a paraphrase. It's not word for word. But I think that the meaning you get from the Mirror Bible, if you don't have a Mirror Bible, get one. It's a work in progress. All right, listen to this. Here's some wisdom that Paul passed to Timothy that I think is imperative for us to grasp. I'm going to read verses 11, 12, and 13. I'll read verse 11 out of the New King James, then I'll read it out of the Mirror Bible. Then I'll read verse 12, verse 12 out of the Mirror, verse 13 out of the New King James, verse 13. I just want you to get the contrast. I want you to get the depth of the meaning of what Paul is saying to Timothy. Now remember our theme this morning. If I were to put a title on the teaching today, I would, I would probably say, you become what you behold. Beholding is becoming. What you look at, what you concentrate on, what your focus is, that's what, that's what you'll become. All right, here's 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 11. New King James. This is a faithful saying, for if we died with him, we shall also live with him. 
Verse 11 out of the mirror. God endorses our faith. We were included in his death and therefore equally included in his resurrection. That verse right off the bat tells us that we're intertwined together in union with the Son. That was the Father's design from the beginning. Verse 12, if we endure, enduring through his power, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he will also deny us. Now that verse has been used to beat the bejabbers out of people that, boy, you better be careful what you do. You don't want to deny him any way, shape, or form. You better get it right because he'll deny you. Can I tell you, here's a flash from heaven for you. That word deny is a pitiful, bad translation, and I'm sure was probably interpreted the way it was to give the church an ability to control and manipulate you and to put fear in you about denying him. Francois nails the word. Listen, listen to what he says, verse 12. Sufferings do not distract us, neither do they contradict us, neither do they contradict our joint position with him in the throne room. The Christ life rules. If we contradict ourselves, remember the New King James said, if we deny ourselves, the, the, the much better word for for um, deny is to contradict, refuse, refuse um, to say the right thing about ourselves, And that's what he says here. If we believe things that are not true about ourselves, he will contradict us and prove us wrong. Now, the, he, he gives a Greek word, A-R-N-E-O-M-A-I. I'm not going to attempt to pronounce it. That's the Greek word that they interpret and deny that actually means contradict. And what, what, what's the thrust of the verse is this. If we say something's not true about ourselves, we say we're just an old sinner. We're, we're, we're full of uh, the edemic nature. We were born deprived. God's not going to affirm that. He's going to contradict it. He's going to set us straight. <clears throat> verse 13 out of the New King James. If we are faithless, he remains faithful. He, that 13th verse is just confirming verse 12. If, if, we deny, uh, if we deny him, he'll also d deny us. If we are faithless, he remains faithful. Now, I, I love what he says here. This is worth the price of the ticket this morning. Our belief does not change what God believes. If we deny ourselves, if we contradict something about ourselves, say things about us that are not true, God's not going to affirm that. If we're faithless, we get it all messed up. Our belief does not change what God believes. He cannot contradict himself. What we believe does not define him. His faith defines us. All right, let me just say that again. What we believe does not define God. God's faith defines us. So verses 11, 12, and 13, Paul's laying down to Timothy to let him know that God is working in this union, and even if we get it wrong, he's not going to confirm it. He's not going to affirm it. In fact, he's, he says, it doesn't, if, if you believe the wrong things about me, it doesn't change what I believe about you. And I'm waiting for you to discover the truth about me. Stay with me this morning. Here's, here's what I, I want to pull from that. In every area of life, there are foundational principles that guide us and direct what we do whether it's business, uh, sports, music, uh, living the Christ is us life, there are abiding principles that you stand on, knowing that if you stay on these principles, they're ultimately going to bring you success. And I think he laid down some good principles in 2 Timothy chapter, uh, chapter 2, verse 11, 12, and 13. The principle is this, when you believe something wrong about yourself, he's going to straighten you out. Even if you got it all messed up, you're faithless. He remains faithful. He remains consistent in putting you on a course that is ultimately going to bring you into the life that Jesus said we could have. So as we live the Christ as us life, that carries also foundational principles that I'm going to highlight this morning that keep us on course, that empower us to go deeper, that gain more clarity, gain more revelation, more understanding. And we've hit on some of those principles. They're, they're five foundations. Grace, finished work of the cross, identity as divinity, the inclusion of all mankind, 
into the death, burial, resurrection of Jesus, an unconditional love that has no conditions, no hoops to jump through. As we take those as our foundation and we keep we keep deep diving those, we keep, we keep plummeting the depths of those. Those are principles that I like to say build the highway that we're traveling on in this journey to come to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ or to live the Christ as us life. I don't think, I don't think they're difficult. This is not difficult. This is not rocket science. This is learning where we focus, learning where, where we put our priority. And when we stay on those, those five things, and I'm not saying they're the only five things that are important. I'm just saying for the purpose of what we do here at the Digital Cathedral, I just like to keep taking those down with more understanding and more revelation because they ultimately reveal the John 10:10 10, 10 life, which Jesus said is the abundant life. I've come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. That abundant life and all these principles, you cannot see with your visible eye these principles, these guiding principles of life. So as we come into an understanding of the Christ is us life, we're beginning to see that reality. True reality is the invisible. Is the invisible. Now, I, stay with me. I'm going to bring all these pieces together as we go along. 2 Corinthians 4.18 says, While we look not at the things that are seen, but the things that are not seen. When you live the Christ as us life, you develop a life around principles that you cannot see. We look not at the things which are seen, but at the things that are not seen, because the things which are seen are temporary, the verse says. But the things which are not seen are eternal. A life where we see reality is not being that which is visible. It's, it's a life of living in the kingdom now. God is spirit. And he created you in image and likeness of spirit. Paul said, it's in him we live. It's in him we move. It's in him we have our very being. So on this, on this journey, on this living the Christ is us life, we're learning to see everyone and everything, are you listening? Everyone and everything through the way that the Father sees it. We're living, in, we're living in between two worlds right now, and those two worlds, earth and heaven, visible, invisible, uh, seen, unseen, those two dimensions are coming closer together until there's a, there is a time that is at hand that you're going to be able to flow from one dimension to the other, even as Jesus did. John chapter 17. John chapter 17, let, let me read. This is part of the prayer that Jesus prayed in, in uh, John chapter 17. I'll just, I'll just read two verses, verses 15 and 16, because remember, what you behold, you become. So if you want to change what you are becoming, you change what you're looking at, where your focus is, beholding. John chapter 17, verse 15, I'm, I'm pulling you out of the visible world. I'm placing you into that invisible dimension where the real life is. Hold on. John chapter 17, verse 15. Jesus said, I don't pray that you take them out of the world, but you keep them from the evil one. They are not of the world, just as I'm not of the world. So we're changing realms. We're changing dimensions. We're in the world, but the Christ life is not part of the world. It's a, it's a Romans chapter 12, verse 2. It's a transforming of our minds. And as you are transforming from one world, the world that you were raised in, the world the culture thrives in, that world of five senses, visible, what you can see, the world of duality, right, wrong, good, evil. As you transition out of that world to world of spirit, and you begin to focus on spirit, you begin to focus on invisible, you're going to run into some words of Jesus that create conflict. Now I'm going to start getting into the meat of the message. You're going to run into, as you make this transition, as you live the Christ is us life, as you learn not to contradict things about yourself because the Father's not going to affirm it, do you think it might be possible that we haven't lived the abundant life because we have thought wrong about us, we thought wrong about the Father, and as a result of that, the Father has not worked in confirming what we believe. He's waiting for you to make that shift, to make that turn 
into the realm of the Spirit. Now, as you make that turn, there are going to be, be some words that Jesus spoke that are going to cause conflict. And here we're going to get into where we want to really go this morning. Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6 this is part of the Sermon on the Mount. I just want to read verses 31 through 34. This is the conflict that if you haven't faced it yet, I'll just tell you, it's coming. In your development, it's going to come. John chapter 6 and verse 31. Here we go. Therefore, don't worry saying, what are we going to eat? Visible. Or what shall we drink? Visible. What shall we wear? Visible. For all these things the Gentiles seek are those that are still living in a earthly dimension that haven't crossed over to where they see that reality is invisible, that you were created to function in that invisible world. For your father knows that you have need of all these things. All right, so he says, don't do this. Don't, don't make that your focus. Don't make that your priority. Now he's going to tell us a great key in living the Christ is us life in verse 33. But seek the kingdom of God. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things in verse 32 that we strive so hard to get will be added to you. Can you see change of focus? Can you see change of what we are, are to behold? He says, don't, let, me, let me bring that into to 2024. Can I do that? He's saying this, don't take thought for money. Even when pressing financial obligations begin to bear down on you. And maybe year after year, you're facing financial pressure. You know, they park on your doorstep. Some of it we've caused ourselves because we've not handled our money wisely. And sometimes financial difficulties come beyond our own power. Nothing we did of, of our own. The Christ is us life should teach us how to usher into a life that is free from anxiety, free from the worry about food and shelter and clothes and money and bills. And he tells us in those verses, don't get, don't get all messed up. Don't get jacked up by those things. He said, I'm going to tell you how you can get those needs met. Seek first the kingdom. Take no thought. Don't stress. Don't lay on your bed all night tossing and turning, wondering how you're going to do it, how you're going to make it. Don't focus on those things. Why should we not focus on those things? Luke chapter 12. Luke chapter 12. This is going to get really good as we get into this. Luke chapter 12. Here's, here's why. Luke chapter 12. I'll just read one verse. Verse 32. He said, Don't fear, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. You don't have to earn it. You don't have to, to strive for it. You don't have to push for it. It is your father's good pleasure. He, does, he delights in it. He, de, he wants to. He desires to give you the kingdom and everything that is involved in that kingdom. So within that kingdom, can I, can I tell you for sure? There's everything that you'll ever need for life. Everything you'll need for spiritual development is in that kingdom. Everything you're going to need for the practical needs is within that kingdom. I have encountered, and I've been guilty of it in, in years gone by, till I begin to see some of the things I teach at the Digital Cathedral. I spent all my life pursuing, trying to locate the kingdom so that I could receive from the kingdom out there someplace. I could receive from the sky god who is out yonder, through his kingdom, I could get what I needed. And I totally missed it. You know why? Here we go. Luke chapter 17. He said, seek first the kingdom. Matthew 6, 33. Then he said, it's your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. So I, I was searching. I was looking all over. Where's the kingdom? I need to tap into the kingdom. Father, give me the kingdom. Show me the kingdom. And he says this in Luke chapter 17. And verse 21, he said, they will say, see here or see there. For indeed the kingdom, <clears throat> the kingdom is within you. What you are to seek is within you. And it's been your father's good pleasure to give you that kingdom. So the day of searching is over. If you're still searching, still looking for the kingdom, that day is over, and the day of discovery, 
the day of, of pulling out of that kingdom. What we need is here. Trying to get what's in the kingdom of God to come to us from some nebulous, unknown place is over. Now, I'm going to, I'm going to tell you some heavy kingdom truth that you're going to have to grasp this morning. I told you I was bringing this into 2024. There is no such thing as a kingdom supply of money, automobiles, clothes, houses, or anything else that's visible. No such animal. Those things are effects of the supply. They are visible manifestations of the supply, and we get fixated on the visible manifestations. We get, we get fixated on the effects and not the supply. What, the things that you need, they're not the supply. The things that you desire, they're not the supply. They're the result of the supply. Seek first the kingdom, that's the supply. And all these things will be added to you. That's the effects of the supply. Do you see in looking back over your life how you have sought the money, you have sought the kingdom, or the, 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 the car, the, the house, the new job. You've sought those things. That's where your focus has been and worked out too good. So Jesus, as we learn to live this Christ as us life, entwined with the Father through the Son and the Spirit, he's bringing us into another dimension. It's not a visible dimension. It's an invisible dimension. It's what you don't see because we don't look at those things. You cannot see the kingdom. It's not visible. It's within you. So when you, when you, when you seek the source, when you seek the supply, the things are added to you they come from, from the supply. So as we conform to the world, you know, we, we spent all of our time, every ounce of energy that we had, tried to attain what in fact was our Garden of Eden's supply or the kingdom of God. The things that we are always seeking after, they are the effects of the supply, but they are not the supply. We've had a wrong, we've had a wrong priority, wrong focus. We've beheld the wrong thing. So if they're not, if those things are not the supply, what is the supply? The kingdom that is within you. The added to you are the effects. He didn't say seek the effects. He said that within you, it's your father's good pleasure to give the kingdom. The kingdom is within you. So as you, as you begin to seek the kingdom, we're talking about living the Christ as us life. I'm telling you, this was the secret of Jesus. Let me digress just a minute. Let me go back. One time I talked to you about orange trees. I'm going to talk to you about orange trees again. The oranges on the branches are not the supply of the orange tree. The oranges that you see on the branches are the effects of the supply of the orange tree. Now, when you see those oranges on the tree, you can, you can eat the oranges. You can sell the oranges. You can give them away. You can do whatever you want with the oranges. But next year, I will guarantee you that there will be, because of supply that comes from the tree, there will be more effects on the branches of the orange tree, and you'll see more oranges. In John chapter 15, uh, quick paraphrase here. Jesus said, I'm the tree, you're the branches. There is a, there is a law of operation. A law of production in that orange tree that never stops. That production is going on continually. You might look at that orange tree. You don't see any oranges. All the oranges are gone. But because of the law of operation, I told you there are certain laws, certain things that, that create uh, uh, business, music, sport, whatever. There are certain things. If you play baseball, it's all about running, throwing, hitting. right? It's all about all those things. Catching, those are the fundamentals. And when you go to spring training, a major league team, they work on those fundamentals because that, those are basic laws to success. You might look at that orange tree. I have an orange tree in my backyard. Right now, I can look at that orange tree. There's no oranges on it. But because of the law of operation, the law of production, those oranges are going to appear again right at the right time. Now what happens is this, that law of operation in the orange tree 
operates through the roots. And those roots begin to draw to itself the minerals and the water and the utilization of sunshine. And they take those things and they transform it into sap that is then drawn up through the trunk of the tree out to the branches. And I can tell you from my orange tree, first you got these little blossoms on there. And then one day you start noticing these little green, they're bigger than marbles, but they're not, not a whole lot bigger at first. Start noticing these little green things on the branches. And as you watch it, you can watch those things develop into these great big oranges, just waiting for me to pick off and eat. Now, the supply was developed in the tree from the roots that grew, that, that drew the minerals and the, and the water and every nutrient that was needed. It came up through the trunk and it works year round. It continues to work. And the, the effect of the supply was the orange. Now, let me ask you a question. Do you think God cares more about an orange tree than you? He went to great pains. He went to great care to show us that the kingdom within us is the supply. There is a law of operation working in you. It's called the kingdom of God. And our awareness of this law, our consciousness of it, as, as it begins to work within us, this kingdom that is within us, as it begins to work, it, it, it begins to draw people to you. It begins to draw circumstances, ideas, creativity all kinds of open doors and those come up through your consciousness and the effects as they as they reside in your consciousness then you're directed to the money the job the house the car whatever it is the, they're added to you but the things that are added to you are not the supply and I, i'm really driving at home this morning because i think this is a needed step in our journey the supply, the supply will be the law of operation in the kingdom. That's where the supply comes from. That's where everything that you need comes from. Seek first the kingdom of God. So this, this law, this kingdom supply works in your consciousness. I like to call it the law of the spirit of life that is in Christ Jesus. That's that, that law of the spirit of life dwells within you. If the spirit that raised Jesus from the dead, that power, that life-giving force, if it is within you, it will also, that verse says, quicken, give life to your mortal body. So the life comes from within. And, and, and we develop that. I hope I'm not going too deep, too fast this morning. We develop that consciousness, that 24-7 consciousness, as you begin to tap the supply. And here's how you tap it. You begin to meditate, begin to think. You and the Father are one. That's why I told you that. that verse, it's actually John 14, 20. That verse that, that Jesus used to walk successfully, that Paul used to bring every revelation to the table, that law is still active. That, that, that supply is still in demand. And the way you begin to have that sap begin to come up through you and begin to produce the added to you is begin to understand and meditate. You and the Father are one. Nothing can separate you. Number two, I got six of these. Number one, you and the Father are one. Number two, nothing can separate you from the Father. Number three, you live by every word that is spoken to you by the Father. I'm not talking about reading your Bible. I'm talking about what He speaks to you, what you perceive, what your intuition, consciousness do you know intuition and consciousness helps you to develop a sensitivity to the Spirit of God? You live by every word that is spoken to you by the Father. You don't live by bread alone. You don't live by natural resources. Number four, you only say what the Father says. You stop, you stop saying things that are not true about you. Remember, we read that if you say something wrong about you, he's not going to affirm it. He's going to contradict you. So you need to find out what the Father says about you. You need to begin to see you through his eyes, not, not through the eyes of the church house, not through the eyes of your family, your teacher, your friends, anybody else. You need to understand what the Father says about you. Ephesians 1.4 said that he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world, that we should walk. And here's how he sees you. Holy and blameless 
before him in love. He looks at you as holy and blameless. You need to let that integrate in because that starts the supply to roll. Number five, you only do what you see the Father do. And sometimes we just got to hold back and wait till we see what he's doing. The key, to, one of the great keys to success in life is to see what the Father's doing, then join him. Number six, that Christ is your is in you. He is living your life as you, expressing himself as you. So as we, as we fill our awareness of those things, as those things build, and can I tell you, they don't build overnight. This is a process. This is a journey. Don't get, don't get uh, in a big rush to try to make the oranges pop out on the branches. That's not where our focus is. What you behold, you become. What we're going to behold is the kingdom. What we're going to behold is what the Father says about us. And you develop that consciousness by new thought patterns, and you develop them on purpose. I just gave you six. They're not, you know, we could, we could make a whole list. We could spend a year on the truths that we need to focus on because they initiate the supply from the kingdom. When you rise up, when you go to bed, as you think about it during the day, the more, the more sun conscious you become, the less sin conscious you'll become. And you're going to find that your closeness, sense of closeness, he's never far away. You cannot separate yourself from him. But that, 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 that sun consciousness, that father consciousness, it just begins to abide with you at all times. Now, Paul, Paul said it just a little bit different in uh, Romans chapter 8, Romans chapter 8, in verse 5, Romans chapter 8, in verse 5, he says this, for those who live according to the flesh, the five physical senses, the realm of appearance, uh, they're, they're living there, they're trying to draw from that realm, he said they set their minds on it, and here's, here's what it produces, For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit on the things of the Spirit. So you got two different mindsets, two different focuses, two different mindsets. Then he goes back to be carnally minded, which is the flesh minded, carnal, carne, flesh, is, is death. Doesn't mean, that doesn't mean you're going to die. What that means is that you're disconnected from the source of life. You're disconnected from your supply, which is the kingdom. You're disconnected from a consciousness that you are one with the Father through the Son in the Spirit. It's enmity against God. It's not subject to the law of God, nor, neither indeed can it be. Those that are in the flesh cannot please God, but you're not in the flesh. Those that are spirit-minded, kingdom-focused, live based on what they don't see, they understand that's reality. What that produces, that mind produces added unto you life and peace. In Philippians chapter 4, verse 8 and 9, <clears throat> Paul said, whatsoever things are good. See, we're talking about focus. We're talking about what you want to think about, which, where, you, where you want to put your priority. Paul said things that are good, pure, perfect, lovely, and of a good report, if there's any praise, any virtue, meditate. Think on those things. So med meditating, that, that's not a bad word. Meditating just means to chew it over like a cow does its cud. Chew it over. Get everything you can out of it. If you're meditating on you and the Father are one, I'll tell you, if you don't know what to think about, think about that. That's going to lead you to all kinds of places. It will start the sap flowing up through you and into your consciousness. And I'm going to tell you what, he's going to begin to direct your steps in some ways that maybe you never even thought about. Meditating draws out of you, out of the kingdom, what you need at that moment. I love the way the Psalms chapter 1 put it. I want to read this out of the, out of the Passion Translation. See, this, this, this really just fits right in. This is a, a good piece to the puzzle this morning. He says, what delight comes to the one who follows God's way, follows the supply, got the concentration, the focus there. He won't walk in the step with the wicked, nor share the sinner's way, nor be found in the scorner's seat. His pleasure and passion is remaining true to the word of I am. His passion, his focus, his identity comes as he looks at what I am says about who I am. And what I am 
says about who I am is in agreement with him, and he will never contradict it. He'll affirm it. Here's what, here's what you'll be like. He will be standing firm like a flourishing tree, planted by God's design, deeply rooted by the brooks of bliss, bearing fruit in every season of life. He is never dry, never fainting, ever blessed and prosperous. Do you see where, where the supply comes from? All right. Now, he, he makes a little footnote um, in, in the Passion Translation on verse 3. At the bottom it says, the metaphors found in this verse, verse 3, can be paraphrased as no matter what he sets out to do, he brings it to a successful conclusion. I'm telling you, that's the life that you want. You want what you set your hand to to come to a successful conclusion. And what we're talking about this morning here at the Digital Cathedral is how we tap into that success, how we're able to draw out of ourselves, out of that kingdom that is within us, that life that Jesus promised. Now, as you do this, as you do this, as you, as you begin to, to focus on those six, you and the Father are one. Nothing can separate you from him. You live by every word spoken to you by I am that I am, and he tells you what you am. Right? You, you focus there. You only say what the Father says. You hear what he says. You, you confirm it. He confirms it. Number five, you only do what you see the Father do. And number six, you understand that Christ is expressing his life as you. Not through you. You're not, you're not living for him. He's expressing his very life source as you. Now, this is going to shake you up a little bit. As you do this, I'm going to tell you, you're going to hit a wall on some things the wall will be realizing that maybe the things you know about God were actually not true knowledge of God that he imparted to you. What we know, oftentimes, are informational quotations about God. Maybe things other people know. Maybe you listen to YouTube, and, oh, that, that's really good, man. I, I understand. I know that about God. But they're things that I only heard and stored in my memory bank. Now hold on. This hurts, but we're going to have to deal with it. Knowing statements of truth about God or parroting what other people have said, I don't care how good their reputation is, or just reading a book and then saying what the book says is entirely different than knowing the Father for yourself. When you know that you are in union with the Father, you're in union with the Son and the Holy Spirit, and the three of them are entangled and in union with you, living their life as you into this planet today, you're drawing out of the kingdom. I'll tell you what, man, that's, that's where the manifested sons of God are going, and that's what they're going to be bringing into the planet. So how do you do that? Well, you got to spend time alone. That's why I gave you these six things. I, they're, they're this little starter kit. He's going to show you other things that you need to think about. You spend time alone. You walk with him like Adam in the cool of the evening. You develop a conscious, a, a, an awareness that his very life is your life. See, Paul said, this isn't my life. The life that I live is not my life. I don't live it according to, to uh, what I'm seeing. He said, I live it according to what I don't see. You begin to live in an awareness that, every, listen, everything the Father has is yours. You want to meditate on something? Meditate on that. It is that oneness that creates the unlimited. It creates the infinity. Just as the sap comes up through the trunk and the result, the added two are the oranges on the branches. I'm telling you the unending supply to where you don't have to take thought about money, about bills, about my car, about my... You don't have to take thought about that because you've tapped into an everlasting supply. My, your book says that the earth is the Lord's in all of its fullness. Remember what the father told in the parable of the prodigal son, what the father told the older son that had always been faithful to him? He said, son, everything that I have is yours. 
everything that I have is yours. So let's agree this morning. Let's agree on some things this morning. Let's agree that just as the orange tree does not have a, a panic attack when the oranges don't show up on the branches, all right? If you can look at the orange tree, it doesn't have any oranges, or the orange tree isn't sweating it. All the orange tree is aware of is that it needs the flow of supply to produce the effects of those big oranges. Orange tree doesn't think about the oranges. Orange tree stays intact to the supply. When Jesus said, I'm the vine, you're the branch, in that parable, he said, look, all you have to do is stay connected to me. I am, I am the supply. I am the source. You know, if you owned an orange grove, what you would concentrate on is making those trees healthy. You know that the oranges are just a natural byproduct of a healthy tree. So what the Father's working in us is to make us healthy, spirit, soul, and body. And the way we do is we begin to walk in that union, that oneness with him. Just as the orange tree doesn't sweat it about the oranges, you and I need to take no thought for dollars. All we need is a flow of kingdom supply. I'm telling you that within the kingdom is everything that you'll ever need. And that comes through a consciousness of your oneness, your union, your walking with the Father. If that supply was not already in you, catch this. If that supply was not already in you, then when Jesus said, seek first the kingdom, there would be nothing that could be added to you if it wasn't already in the kingdom that is within you. Whoa, 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 whoa. That's good. If the supply was not already in you, if the supply was not in the trunk of the tree, then the oranges could never pop up on the branches. If the supply is in you, is not in you, then what Jesus said in Matthew 6, of seeking first the kingdom and all these things will be added, there could be nothing added to you if they weren't already within you. And he gives us a secret. He said, don't seek, don't seek the effects, seek the supply, the king in the kingdom. The source of supply is what the Christ is us life is pursuing that this is what we're beginning to acclimate into our life the supply will be continually producing in us it will always be flow it is always flowing in you so let's let's think of dollars or whatever it is you need today let's think of those as oranges on the tree so even if the if the tree looks barren even if your checkbook says zero this morning even if you got more bills than money Let's, re let's refocus today. Let's put our focus on the supply and not the effect. Can we do that? Are, are you able to do that? The source of supply knows. He said, don't worry about these things. You're in that sixth chapter that we read, Father already knows you have need of all these things. There's one verse in your book that says, before you call the answer, the supply is working. Everything in this outer realm the effects, the visibility was given to us to enjoy, but they were not given to us to seek. The, we, we weren't given everything out here in this visible world. Father created this world, man, for us to enjoy. There's, there's nothing in there that we shouldn't be enjoying. But never mistake what you see, what you feel as the source or the supply. The effect is the result of kingdom supply. Seek the kingdom and the effects, the add-ons will be yours. The inner supply, the kingdom within. It, it, it appears as the necessary outer things. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Where you focus, what you behold, you'll become. Jesus taught us that going outside for what we need doesn't work. That's why he put the kingdom within. If we were to seek outside of ourselves for what we need, we'd be looking somewhere else, which we, many of us have done all our life. We've, we haven't had a handle on the kingdom being within us and for that being the supply of everything we need. The multitude was not fed by the five loaves and two fish. They were fed by the inexhaustible supply within Jesus and he manifested it. When you go to the kingdom within and you become aware, 
you move past the natural kingdom, and I'm all done, and you move into the reality of another kingdom. You and I are learning to live in that kingdom. We're coming, we're coming into that day, if you're not already there. We're no longer do you worry about what you're going to eat, what you're going to drink, what house you're going to live in, how you're going to get enough finances. That's not, what, that's not worrying you anymore. And as you seek the kingdom, you're going to find that, that anxiety for the effects lessens. Experience will teach you that he always is faithful. He knows what you have need of before you ask. So he says, seek first the kingdom and let me supply you that stuff to you. I'm not, the supply doesn't come to you because you seek the effects. The supply is not ever working through you that will produce the effects as efficiently, as effectively, and as continually as the trunk of the orange tree draws from the roots and creates the sap, sends it to the branch, it creates these little green, little green oranges that become these big old luscious oranges. That's how he supplies and meets every need. My God shall supply every need according to his riches in glory through Christ Jesus. So we're just learning to get ourselves in sync with what the Father says about us and what Father says about the way to live the best life possible. Amen? All right, God bless. I think we'll stop right there for this week. Been good to be with you today. Thank you for joining me. Uh, let's continue together on this journey. It's going to get better and better and better. Or as one of my friends says, gooder and gooder as we continue to progress. We're learning so much and the spirit of truth is so active today, revealing to us and imparting to us. And we're learning to just relax and let the flow begin to work within our life, producing the effects. Amen. See you next time at the Digital Cathedral. If your heart has been touched by Don Keithley's words, and you believe this ministry can enrich your spiritual journey, we warmly invite you to subscribe and hit the bell icon. By doing so, you'll stay up to date with all the new and inspiring content from the Digital Cathedral, ensuring you never miss out on the transformative power of God's love and grace. You may make a donation at donkeithley.com. We thank you for your continued support and encouragement.